It's not build that wall anymore. It's continue building that wall because we're building. It. We're spending a lot of money and we're going for more and we'll get it done. The Democrats want to protect illegals coming into this country, some of whom are not good. Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael Piroman. The president took aim at immigration, the media, and even the late night talk show hosts during a rally in South Carolina yesterday. Look at all those fake newsers back there. Look at all, well, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. One of the uh, of opposing people. networks, you know, the enemy, the enemy of the people, I call them. <laughs> you, you're worse than I am, these people. No, we just want honesty. We want a little fairness. I'm loving what we're doing. You people are loving what we're doing. The, the guy on CBS is, is, what a low life. What a low life. I mean, honestly, are these people funny? And I can laugh at myself. If, frankly, if I could, I'd be in big trouble. But there's no talent. He's not, they're not like talented people. Here in New York, the tone was quite different. Mayor Bill de Blasio said his office estimates that there are about 300 separated immigrant children in the city, that the feds have no game plan to reunite them with their parents, and that the federal government has continued to ignore his requests for further information. In Albany, Governor Cuomo announced that New York will provide additional mental health counseling and other support services for immigrant children separated and unaccompanied in our state. The governor also stressed that he will do all he can to try to reunite the children with their relatives. And as Americans continue to follow stories of families being separated at the border, the residents of Sesame Street are being deployed to help. The Sesame Workshop is working with nonprofit groups to provide toolkits for caregivers who are taking care of the separated children, many of whom are likely to be traumatized by their experience. And as the situation continues at the border, Long Island Congressman Tom Suozzi had a chance to tour a facility in Syosset where children who have been separated from their families are being held. Like many others, Congressman Suozzi is concerned about the psychological toll that family separation is taking on the children. Jenna Flanagan had the opportunity to catch up with the congressman. Jenna? Thanks, Raf. So, Congressman, we've got a lot of issues to cover here. Um, but before we get into uh, what's happening at the border and, of course, some of the comments that the president made, I want to start with your reaction to the Supreme Court's recent decision to uphold the president's travel ban. I was surprised that the Supreme Court did not recognize a religious bias based upon the history and based upon the lower court rulings. Uh, it's a big concern of mine and many Americans uh, that the president's efforts in this area uh, while it's important to protect national security, uh, are directly related towards targeting uh, Muslims and Muslim communities. It sends a bad message about America and about our values. Uh, but the Supreme Court is the Supreme Court, and now that's the law of the land. All right. Uh, well, tabling that, if it's possible, and then, of course, moving forward, I do want to talk to you because you traveled to the border and you got a chance to tour some of the de detention facilities. Now, first off, what was your reaction to what it was you were seeing when you got down to... Uh, the south border? Well, we, we also went to talk to the Border Patrol as well, as well as to go to El Paso to the Tornillo facility, which is a, a new facility. Uh, the facility is run by HHS, the Health and Human Services Department, the Office of Refugee Resettlement. And uh, it's a private contractor that's been in business for 75 years. It's a not-for-profit that responds to emergencies uh, throughout the country and throughout the world. And quite frankly, it was a very well-run facility. And for the terrible circumstances that brought rise to the need for a facility like this, which I completely oppose the president's policy, and we're happy that it's been reversed. We have to look at what the further fallout from that policy is. But considering the terrible circumstances, a facility in the middle of the desert, the temperature was always over 100 degrees that day. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a well-run facility. Uh, the tents were air-conditioned. There were recreational facilities. There was a dining hall. There were medical facilities. There were the, the, to me, the heat was so oppressive, but kids were out playing soccer. Uh, and there was sufficient staff, it appeared to me, um, to be, have good, uh, uh, a good handle on the situation. So there were, it was very professionally run. I was happily surprised. The pictures we see of kids in cages uh, on mats mm -hmm. uh, are often by the 
uh, uh, it, law enforcement officials when they're first detained and apprehended before they're put through processing and sent to the Health and Human Services Department. So when the Border Patrol first apprehends these ki uh, families and separates the kids, uh, they are put in these more rudimentary uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've spoken with a lot of my colleagues who have visited mothers, uh, and they really described awful situations where the mo mothers are just desperate, wailing, uh, so distraught about where their kids are. Uh, in this facility, it was it was well run. The kids were calm. Mm -hmm. But my, some of my colleagues and some of the people that were with us spoke Spanish, and they asked a lot of questions of the children. And uh, two of the kids, their parents had already been deported to Guatemala, and they wanted to still stay in America and try and go with a sponsor in America. Okay, well, that does sound a little bit more hopeful than some of the stories that we've been hearing about some of the young people uh, who were being detained. Uh, now, I also do want to ask, though, about what was your take on if the kids seemed like they were okay, what about the people who were running the facility? You said like you said that it seemed to be a very well-run facility, but for the staff who are in charge, do they feel overwhelmed or do they feel like they have the support that they need to give these kids the help that they need? At this particular facility, the staff was uh, 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 very professional. Uh, felt we're not overwhelmed at this particular facility, but there were comments from different people that they just did not support the policy of separating kids from family in the first place. Most of these folks are professional social workers, mental health workers, uh, medical workers. Uh, th they did not like this policy. And let me make something clear. You know, while there were the, 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 the view of these children that I saw in the brief time that I was there was that things were relatively under control and calm, there's no question that these children are facing long-term psychological consequences uh, because of being separated from their families in a foreign land. Uh, so we have to be cognizant of the fact that this is a long-term issue that's going to have to be addressed. Of course. And uh, not only were the children that you saw who were uh, at the border being detained, but we've also come to find out that there have been detained children who have been dispersed to various locations around the country, some even in your backyard in Syosset. Yeah. Mercy First is a facility that was started by the Sisters of Mercy over 100 years ago uh, in Syosset. And they have capacity uh, for over 100 children, and they have 40 unaccompanied minors, and they had eight children that were separated from their parents. I went there on Monday, and those kids uh, were joined by two more children that had been separated from their parents, or strike that. Uh, I don't know when they were separated from their parents, but they joined this facility uh, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, so it went from eight children to 10 children. And there were kids as young as four years old, five years old, six years old, seven years old, all the way up to 17. Um, so again, a very professionally run facility, uh, really expert people, really focused on a mission of trying to look out for children's welfare. Uh, but these are, these are just bad circumstances. Do you agree with uh, the frustration that we've seen um, uh, spoken by Mayor de Blasio or even Governor Cuomo, who have both said that there's a lot of information that just hasn't been uh, disseminated to local governments in terms of which kids are where, how many of them are there, when did they get there, how long are they going to be there, et cetera, so many different questions. And then, of course, there's the governor's uh, announcement that he's going to be suing the administration. Yeah, this is a big challenge. You know, the federal government, a lot of governments, are large, gigantic, bureaucratic behemoths and we're dealing with people's lives here. And in this circumstance, as a practical matter, the parents are being detained under the authority of the Homeland Security folks, you know, whether it's Border Patrol or ICE or whatever, wherever they are in the particular part of the system. The children are being detained uh, through Health and Human Services under the Office of Refugee Resettlement. One group has a database where the kids are, the other group has the database as to where the parents are, and we have to make sure that those databases are matched uh, and that there's coordination between the two. You know, I asked several times, both in Texas and in New York, about, you know, what happens when you've got a kid that's, you know, a young child that doesn't even know its last name and, and, and uh, you know, can't really communicate where they were from. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that, although that we've been assured, uh, it was by Border Patrol, is that when children are first processed and the families are first processed, that they keep the information in a database we have to make sure that those, those children don't get mixed up some along, somewhere along the way. They're not necessarily wearing an ID band to identify uh, where their, what their names are or where they're from originally. Well, of course, uh, Congressman, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but uh, these are all things that I understand are attempting to be addressed at the congressional level. And so far, we've seen two conservative bills 
fail. There was a more moderate bill that's been pushed off to this week. And I'm wondering... That's still a very conservative bill. I don't want to give that the impression that's okay. a moderate bill. It's still a very conservative bill. I'm assuming that means it doesn't have your support then. It does not have my support. What is it that you need to see to get your support on one of these pieces of legislation? I want to make it very clear that I would support border security. I would, I would, I would put in the $25 billion or whatever the president is looking for for border security. If he wants to do a physical structures in some places or technology or more border patrol, I would support that kind of thing. But we're not going to support that unless there's also an attempt to do comprehensive immigration reform. There are 11 million plus people in this country that have been here, some for 30 years, that are living underground, uh, living under this specter of what's going on under this administration that's pushing immigrants further underground. We need to deal with them, not just the dreamers. The dreamers are so important that we deal with them and give them a path to citizenship. But let's figure out how to legalize or regularize these 11 million plus people in our country so that they can become productive members of society where they're paying taxes, that are not living underground, that are cooperating with the law enforcement and other government officials to try and make all of our lives better. Uh, it's been going on for 30 years in our country and we need to finally address it. We're not gonna be able to address it with only one house, one side pressing bills through without communicating with the Democrats. So, uh, I would like to see, I'm for border security. Mm -hmm. I'm for regularizing these 11 million plus people. I'm for giving a path to citizenship for the dreamers. Uh, and I'm for treating people like human beings. I'm not for reducing legal immigration. I'm not for uh, scaring people even further than they are. And I'm not for a piecemeal approach that only addresses some of the problem and not this problem that we've been talking about for 30 years. All right. Well, listen, Congressman Swazi, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the program, giving us your take on what needs to be done, at least from your perspective, to get immigration legislation through. And of course, to give us your uh, personalized take on what you saw, at least going on at the border. Thank you. Janet, thanks so much for the time. Absolutely. Absolutely.